Ahoy there! Captain Benzie here, coming at you with another episode of the Cat Skull Academy, the series that aims to teach you everything you'll need to know about the various different gameplay systems and mechanics in Eve Echoes. In today's video, we're going to be covering the topic of sinusural fields and jump drives, so by the end of this lesson you should have a firm understanding of what a sinusural field or beacon is, how sinusural field generators work and which ships can fit them, how to operate a jump drive, and how skills can be used to affect these. This is all basically about the relocation of capital ships. Now, if you do enjoy this video, please do let me know by hitting like on it, sub to the channel for all things Eve Echoes, ensuring to ding that notification bell to make sure you never miss an upload. If you do have any questions or things you'd like to know about Eve Echoes, feel free to ask both in the description down below, and of course come join us on the Cat Skull Discord, which is linked in the description below as well. There's a friendly bunch of folk there, including myself, who are more than happy to answer any questions you may have regarding Eve Echoes. It's there, designed purely to help out new players. Players, um, to discover and figure out how Eve Echoes actually works. Now with all of that said and done then, let's jump right into today's lesson on Sinosural Fields. First of all then, it's probably worth discussing what a sinusural field and beacon actually are. Now, using a visual demonstration, what you see on screen here is a sinusural field, and the ship generating it is now a sinusural beacon. This is essentially a point in space that friendly, in the same fleet, capital ships with jump drives can now jump directly to. You don't need to be in the same system, in fact you can jump across multiple systems in order to reach one of these, as long as it is in within range, as we will discuss later on. Essentially, this allows you to redeploy an entire fleet of capital ships quickly and efficiently without the need to slowly align and jump manually from system to system to system. And this does also allow capital fleets to arrive in a system almost completely unannounced. So now, let's talk about how these actually operate. Probably the most common way to generate a sinusural field is using the aptly named sinusural field generator. Now this is a mid-slot module, so if we go to the market and scroll all the way down the mid-slots to fleet assistant module and long press here, you can see we have the Aurora fleet sinusural field generator. At the time of me making this video, this is the only sinusural field generator currently available in Eve Echoes. And if we look down the basic info page here, you'll see it's got a lot of different entries that are very unique to this particular module. Starting at the top then, we have the Sinosural Signature Stability, and that's a mouthful if you've ever had one. Um, and here you can see that the Aurora has a Signature Stability of 1. This comes into play in regards to jamming Sinosural Fields, which we will talk about at length later, when we start looking at the Corporation Citadel modules that are relevant here to Sinosural Fields as well. For now though, just understand that the Aurora has a signature stability of 1. We then have a sinusural beacon broadcast range, in this case, this is fleet. It means the beacon, broadcast by the ship generating the sinusural field, is only shared within the same fleet. You cannot jump to a sinusural field unless you are in the same fleet as the ship generating the beacon. You'll see that later on, it'll make more sense then. The maximum activation speed here is 100 meters per second. This means if you want to activate a sinusural field generator, the ship trying to activate it must be traveling no faster than 100 meters per second. You need to be going very slow and this does make you a little bit of a sitting duck whilst you're doing it. We then have a simultaneous module statistic of one. You can only have one of these modules fitted to a ship, and the ship does require a very specific roll bonus where it says can fit sinusural field generators. If it does not have that bonus, it cannot fit any of these, and even with that bonus, it can only fit one, which kind of makes sense. You'd only ever really want to fit one of these, but it's just to stop you fitting two if you had a reason to. The power grid requirement of these is fairly modest, only 20 megawatts. Considering you're going to be fitting these primarily to Covert Ops cruisers, that is small enough that you can comfortably fit it to pretty much any of those ships without worrying too much about the rest of your fittings. 
The warp jammer strength here of 100 applies to your own ship. So it's essentially when you activate the sinusural field generator, it is like being jammed by 100 warp disruptors. Why this isn't just cannot warp like the showdown mode on capital ships, I don't know. But basically you are being hit with 100 warp disruptors when you are activating a sinusural field generator. You are not able to warp away. We have an activation time here of 180 seconds. That's how long the sinusural field lasts in space, the time at which other players can lock onto your beacon and jump to your sinusural field. There is then a reactivation delay of 30 seconds, so if you allow that activation time to elapse at the end of that 180 seconds, you must wait for a duration of 30 seconds before you can activate the sinusural field generator a second time. We then have an absolutely massive fuel consumption here of 48,000 gigajoules of fuel. This means that when you activate this Aurora Fleet Sinusural Field Generator, 48,000 gigajoules worth of fuel will be consumed from your ship's cargo hold, and if you do not have sufficient fuel within your cargo hold, you will not be able to activate this Sinusural Field Generator. The cost of fuel attached to these does make this prohibitive for just using these willy-nilly. You are going to need to plan when and where to place your beacons for ships to jump to. You don't want to jump a dreadnought to you and then you fly three systems across and then do it again too often because it is going to get very expensive with fuel. This means that dreadnoughts are not, and other capitals are not going to be great for going on PvP roams. You need to essentially be using strategic strikes or possibly even chaining some of your sinusural fields together in order to actually make these jumps because you'll see later on that the jump drives themselves do have a range and thus the sinusural field generator, the beacon, must be within range of the jump drive. You may have to create a chain of those, but be aware the fuel cost of these is absolutely absolutely monstrous. On the subject of jump drives, let's have a look at what those are and how they work now. Now I'm going to do this by going into the Minmatar Republic ship tree, but of course all four empires have their own versions of dreadnoughts and carriers, and this is going to be true both for the Nagalfar and for the Nidhogger here in the Minmatar Republic. Now if we have a look at the roll bonus on these capital ships, you'll see that they have a roll bonus that states jump drive available. If a ship does not state jump drive available, then it does not have a jump drive. So what is a jump drive? Well, it's kind of a special module, but it doesn't appear on the main interface like other modules do. You don't have to fit it and you can't unfit it. It is something that is part and parcel of a capital ship, or of certain capital ships at the very least, the ones that say jump drive available. And if we scroll further down the stats page of whichever ship we're looking at, you'll see here we have the jump drive section, where we can have a look at the different stats. Now first of all, we have the maximum jump range. This is 3.5 light years as standard, and we can affect that later on as you'll be able to see with skills. Now if I were to jump across to the star charts, I've got a little bit of uh, space here shown, and if you look at the centre, you can see 71-UTX being one of the star systems there in the centre right. Just below it and to the left is the system NMMOP. Now, that system is not connected directly. Those two systems are not connected, but if they are within 3.5 light years, then a ship with a jump drive in 7.1 UTX would be able to jump to a sinusural field generated in 9M MOP, as long as it is within that 3.5 light year distance. Beyond this, we then have a jump drive warm-up time. This is how long it takes to actually activate the jump drive and then jump. Here you can see it's zero seconds. There may be things that affect this later in the game, but at the time of writing again, that does seem to be an across the board zero second time. Basically, when you hit jump, you jump instantly and you reappear at the sinusural field in question. We then have a jump drive fuel cost, and you'll see here that this again is a monstrous 100,000 gigajoules per light year, meaning if you wanted to do a jump at the full 3.5 light years, that is going to cost you 350,000 gigajoules worth of fuel. Again, if you do not have sufficient fuel within your ship's fuel hold, then you will not be able to activate the jump drive. You must be within range in order to activate it. You must have enough fuel 
to be able to get you the complete distance. This is not like activating a warp drive, where if you don't have sufficient capacitor, you just stop halfway, recharge your capacitor, and then complete the jump. With a jump drive, you must have the full and complete amount of fuel in order to commit to that jump. On the subject of capacitor as well, you'll see that a jump drive does require 95% capacitor or higher. If your ship is lower than 95%, you will not be able to activate your jump drive. You must have everything there within order. You must be within range of the beacon, you must have sufficient fuel to complete the jump, and you must have sufficient capacitor in order to activate the jump drive. Both sinusural field generators and jump drives can be influenced by training certain skills, and so that's what we're going to look at next. First of all, sinusural field generators. This is actually hiding in a pretty unusual area. If we tap into electronics, and then curiously enough into targeting, you'll find sinusural field technology here. I personally would have expected to find this under fleet support, but there we go. Sinusural field technology, again, obviously it comes in basic, advanced, and expert tiers, and if we look at basic, basic 5 will cost around about 500,000 skill points in order to complete. Now, for that investment, you will get a sinusural field generator activation time reduction of 25%, which means the activation time of a sinusural field generator does decrease, so that field is going to be around for less of a time. But that's okay. That's actually a benefit, because remember, when your ship activates a sinusural field generator, it must be travelling slower than 100 meters per second, and it is unable to warp away to safety. So ideally, you do want quite a short window that your friends can jump to your position. Once they have jumped to position, you then need to be free to move on to safety and leave those capital ships to do their thing, or to join battle, depending on how you want to do it. Arguably, the shorter the time there, the faster your fleet needs to respond, of course, but the less risk you personally are at as the ship generating the sinusural field. The second stat, then, is Sinosural Field Generator Fuel Consumption. We saw that these have a fairly monstrous fuel consumption requirement, and we have a reduction here of 25% again, courtesy of getting to Basic 5. That is a big reduction to fuel, and if you're going to be using Sinosural Field Generators at, uh, at any point, 25% quartering off the amount of fuel required is a really good investment. Finally then, there's the Sinusural Field Generator Restart Time, which is the reactivation delay. It was 35 seconds, 30 seconds, sorry, and we're getting a reduction here of 25% again, so you're going to be able to reactivate that generator a little bit faster than if you weren't skilled into it. This does then, of course, go into Advanced and Expert, and at Advanced, suddenly, again, it's now nearly 2 million skill points in order to get this fully up, but you're going to have an additional 25% reduction to the activation time, an additional 25% reduction to the fuel consumption, and a 40% reduction to the restart time, allowing you to restart it a lot quicker if you need to. If someone missed your original field, then you can generate another one much faster if you've trained into advanced Sinusural Field Technology 5. Finally, then, we have the Expert tier. This costs almost five, well, over 5 million skill points. It is an expensive skill to train into, but it gives us a further reduction to both the activation time and fuel consumption of 20%. At this point in time, the amount of fuel required to activate a sinusural field is actually not all that much, and the restart time is negligible, if at all. I think, actually, once you math this out, it comes down to zero seconds, so you can just reactivate if someone someone in your fleet has completely missed the bus, you can just reactivate that uh, sinusural field generator, generate a second field, and they can jump to you that second time, and it's going to activate much faster, allowing you to get the heck out of there that little bit quicker as the fleet of capitals arrives on your position. Now, of course, that's the Sinusural Field Generator skills. As for jump drives, this is found under cruising technology and under navigation. Below Afterburner and Micro Warp Drive and Engine Operation, we now have Jump Drive Operation. At basic, this is a skill that costs about a million skill points in order to invest in about a million one hundred, I think it works out to. Um, and this is going to reduce the amount of capacitor required by the jump drive by 20%. It's going to reduce the fuel cost, which again is an insane amount of fuel, by a further 20%. And the jump range is increased 
by 20%. So that 3.5 light years is going to be 20% further than that, requiring fewer, 20% uh, fewer fuel per light year, and you're going to need 20% less capacitor than you otherwise would. Advanced jump drive operation, this you're looking at over 4 million um, skill points to get into. Again, it's going to reduce the capacitor need and fuel cost of activating a jump drive and increase the max jump range, this time by only 15%. Once we hit Expert, it's a 10% reduction to capacitor need and fuel cost, and a 10% increase to jump range, but that does come at an insanely high skill point uh, investment of about 12 million skill points. That said, if you were at Expert Jump Drive Operation 5, then the amount of fuel required in order to achieve a jump and the distance that a ship can jump is actually quite considerably larger than it would be at Basic, allowing for a much more mobile Dreadnought or Carrier um, or whatever capital ship you happen to be using with these. Now between those two, honestly, I think jump drive operation is a really useful skill for a capital pilot to train into. This is well worth getting up as high as you can afford the skill points, because the reduction in fuel cost alone is going to be worth the amount of time and isk that you spend training this skill up. Beyond that, the capacitor reduction means that you can jump if you are caught with your trousers down and have a little bit lower capacitor than you might like, and the advanced jump range means that your fleet can be further away from your starting position to get you where you need to be. Now, on the other hand, the sinusural field skills, these I personally don't think are at quite as important, especially if you want to use something like the Tier 1 versions of the Covert Ops cruisers, just the Bellicose Covert Ops, the Arbitrator Covert Ops, that kind of thing, because these are very cheap ships. You just put that ship out into the field with a sinusural field generator on it, and you basically have it as a throwaway. If the enemy fleet happens to show up and blow that ship up, oh well. Yes, it's nice having the ability to reduce the activation time that is going to allow that ship to retreat to safety a bit faster. The lower fuel consumption, again, does mean that you are going to be able to create a field requiring less fuel and thus be more cost effective. But again, you're only, you should only be generating one field, so it's not overly huge, I guess. Um, and the restart time, again, is only important if someone happens to miss the green light the first time that you do it. Just my thoughts and opinions. You may disagree on that one. As previously mentioned, sinusural field generators can only be fitted to certain specific ship hulls. Now, here I'm using the Bellicose Covert Ops, the Bellicose 3 Covert Ops to be precise. And if I were to open up its basic info page, you will see that under its role bonuses, along with can fit Covert Ops cloaking devices, it now has can be fitted with sinusural field generators. And it's not just the Bellicose 3 Covert Ops. If I open up the ship tree, you'll see here that if I go all the way down to the original Bellicose Covert Covert Ops at tech level 7, you'll see here, can be fitted with sinusural field generators. Any Bellicose Covert Ops can do this, along with any of the Arbitrator Covert Ops line, any of the Blackbird Covert Ops line, or any of the Celestis Covert Ops line. Basically, Covert Ops cruisers have that can fit sinusural field generators. Now, once you're out in space, you'll notice that the uh, the actual sinusural field generator itself has a little green tab on it that tells you how many times you can activate this based on the amount of fuel currently within your ship's hold. If I were to open up the inventory here, you can see I'm currently sitting on 10.82k plasmoids. That's a lot of plasmoids. I've borrowed these briefly from the uh, the fuel tank of my personal uh, capsule outpost just to demonstrate this, and that only gives me 57 activations. Now, if I am to tap on this, I will get this alert here telling me activate Aurora Fleet Sinusural Field Generator. It wants you to double check you're going to do this because, again, you must be below 100 meters per second and it is going to anchor you in place for the duration of its activation. If I hit confirm, we get treated to the absolutely stunning graphic of a Sinusural Field being generated and my ship is now a Sinusural Beacon that other players can lock onto. Now I'm going to be putting up some footage on screen now, courtesy of Atticus, where it shows how he goes into the menu, you, active, you navigate through the fleet menu, you tap on the person who is generating that beacon, and you can tap on jump to beacon, and it will take you there straight away, again assuming that your capital ship with the jump drive is both within range, has sufficient capacitor, and sufficient fuel in order to complete that jump. 
Unfortunately, I can't really demonstrate that here on the live server because we just we can't do this willy-nilly. There's a lot of fuel uh, consumed doing this, and I also don't want to risk having a friend flying a capital ship just for a demonstration here, but he has showcased this in that footage there quite nicely. Now you'll see that if I were to try and double tap into space or to warp away, the double tapping into space is very, very little I can do. I'm very much anchored into position. And if I were to try and warp back to another station, I'm going to get my alert here saying that I cannot warp or jump at this point in time due to me having that sinoceral field generator active. You can see the skills have affected this as well. Um, I've got 135 seconds of activation time down from what we saw before with only a 22.5 second reactivation delay and my personal fuel consumption is only 36,000 gigajoules. Now, once I wait and eventually this uh, this sinusural field will dissipate, then I will be able to dock, then I will be able to jump back to or warp to other locations um, as required then, but I do have to wait for that field to dissipate and go away first of all. It's also worth noting at this point that a sinusural field can only be generated in both null sec or low sec. You cannot generate this in high sec because jump drives are not allowed to jump through to those, um, so don't try it. You'll need to be in low sec or null sec in order for this to work. We're about to see now that the sinusural field is about to collapse as the module finishes its activation time here. As that little green line completes, here it goes. And then the field is going to collapse. And we've got our reactivation delay there, where you'll see that if I try to tap it, nothing at all happens. However, because I've given a warp command, it is going to now fill that in and allow me to warp to safety. That's an interesting point. It does mean that if you have a sort of safe point bookmarked, you can automatically activate the sinusural field, hit warp to that safe point, and then wait until the field dissipates. Once the field dissipates, your ship will automatically perform that warp action and warp away to safety. Finally then, there are two Corporation Citadel structures relevant to the discussion on sinusural fields as well. So if we scroll down in the market to structures and then go into the structures submenu, right at the bottom of this in the Corporation Citadel section, there are two new structures here, the sinusural beacon tower and the sinusural jammer tower. Let's have a look at the beacon tower first of all. Now I'm not going to go over things like its basic defense and its anchoring points, those are relevant to how to actually anchor one of these to a citadel and how to defend it etc. We've covered that elsewhere in the Corporation Citadel structure video. Here, for, as far as we're concerned for the purposes of this video, the stats that matter are the Sinosural Signature Stability and the Sinosural Beacon Broadcast Range. You'll notice here that unlike a Sinosural Field generation Generator, which has a stability of 1, this has a stability of 100, which means this is much more difficult to jam. In fact, currently, it is impossible to jam this particular Sinosural Beacon Tower. The broadcast range you'll notice as well has changed from fleet to corporation. You do not need to be fleeted with the citadel in order to use this sinosural beacon from your dreadnought or carrier, of course, because you can't fleet with a structure. So what we do here is essentially you can open up the corporation page, tap on the citadel you wish to jump back to, and then if it, as long as it has the sinusural beacon tower activated, then it, you will be able to jump to it as long as you're within range and all of the other statistics apply. That si uh, sinusural signature stability of 100 means that it will always be active as long as the module itself is and you just need to be in the corporation that it is anchored to so obviously if i'm in a corporation i can't jump to a different corporation's beacon tower even if they are in the same alliance i can only jump to my own corporation's beacon towers the second structure then is the sinosural jammer tower again we've got all of the standard statistics here not relative to this particular discussion and if we scroll all the way to the bottom here we have a sinusural signature stability normal minus 10 reinforced minus 2 and stopped at zero essentially what this does if you have someone you've spotted like uh, bellicose covert ops or uh, celestis covert ops jumping through systems near your home system you then spot that name is now in your current system and you think to yourself oh boy this guy might be generating a sinusural field and we're going to have a whole bunch of capital ships drop onto our doorstep and ruin our day you might activate a sinusural jammer tower what this now does is as long as it's in its normal mode not it's reinforced or stopped 
it will drop the sinusural signature stability of every module in that uh, in that system in that star system by negative 10. that's not going to stop any sinusural beacon tower but it is going to stop any individual sinusural field generator it goes from one down to minus nine at which point it is unable to generate a sinusural field this is your only defense against a sinusural field being generated in your system of course other than destroying the ship that is generating the field if the, the ship is destroyed then the field will dissipate but if you're not sure where they are in system because they've created their own safe point and you can't scan them down in time, then the Jammer Tower is an excellent way to stop them dropping directly to your doorstep. Well worth bearing in mind. You'll notice that once it goes into reinforced mode, it drops from a negative 10 down to a negative 2, and if your opponents can drop it down into its stopped mode, then it will not work at all, and they will be able to generate sinusural fields within the same system as the Jammer Tower. And there we have it, everything that you need to know about sinusural fields, from how to generate them using sinusural field generators and beacon towers, down to how to jam them using the jamming tower, how to utilize them using jump drives, and how skills and ships are required and, you know, can affect all of this. Now, hopefully this has answered any questions that you may happen to have regarding these modules and these particular mechanics. If you do have any questions, however, please do feel free to ask me in the comment section down below. I do try to respond to those as best I can, but the better way still is to come to the Catskull Discord, which is linked in the description. There's a bunch of channels there where you can ask questions and get to meet a bunch of really cool folk, all very interested and keen to help out with everything in regards to EVE Echoes. Of course, if you're looking for a call Operation as well, then the Catskull uh, Cartel is always hiring. Either reach out to us on Discord or contact us in game for further details, although I prefer the Discord route as it makes things just that little bit easier for us. Anyway, folks, that's really all I need to say and do for this particular video. I hope you found it useful. Happy sailing and see you in Ueden.